Yellowstone Battle of the Giants. How Yellowstone Supervolcano fits into a world of moving mountains. This is a strange title for the latest Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. The Chronicles come out every week, as we know. This is the latest one that came out yesterday, a few hours ago, April 29. And they're talking about moving mountains, of course, because Yellowstone is deforming, the caldera is sinking, the Norris Geyser Basin is rising, Steamboat Geyser erupted at least, what, 13 times this year? 30 times last year. It started March of 2018, and since then and up to now, thir over 13 months later, they still do not have a temperature monitor monitoring the Norris Geyser Basin anywhere. This is not my claim. This is what the USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory claims. And besides the fact that they don't have a temperature monitor there, they, don't have, they only have one seismograph there. One. In the area that holds the biggest geyser in the world, which is Steamboat Geyser, it's the biggest geyser in the world, and it can go up to 600 feet in height when it blows. It's deforming and rising, meaning that there's a, the magma plume under there is causing the earth to rise. And they have only one seismograph, and they have no temperature monitor. I don't understand. This, to me, is total, totally inconceivable. It's either an intentional um, miscarriage of their uh, obligatory uh, objectives, their their goals in their in their uh, monitoring in in their the fact that they're there. Uh, they state that they have to monitor Yellowstone, which is one of the world's most dangerous supervolcanoes, in order to see the events that cause the uh, area to perhaps come to an explosion or an eruption. And they can't do that if they don't have enough monitors or temperature or seismograph monitors. Uh, is this intentional? I have no idea. Uh, but to me, it's, uh, it's at least, the least you can call it is malfeasance. Now they're talking about Yellowstone fitting into the giants of moving mountains, meaning volcanoes. He, they say, we may think of mountains as immobile, yet they are not. The reason mountains exist is because the Earth's surface is in constant motion with colliding tectonic plates arising the Himalayas, the Andes, and North America's coastal ranges, and magma surfacing at or near these moving plate boundaries, building up volcanoes. The surfaces of volcanoes also are moved by the magma and hydrothermal plumbing systems that feed them. Sometimes these motions are small, sometimes they are really, really big. This week's Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles is about how Yellowstone deforms, and uh, they even spelt that wrong. Uh, I mean, they can't even spell. They spelled Yellowstone with two S's. Oh, uh, shame. I don't know. They must have their minds on something else. Maybe it's springtime and they're falling in love. I don't know what to say. Um, Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles about how Yellowstone, two S's, deforms and how that deformation Compares the Comapres, somebody who wrote this, <laughs> and how that deformation Comapres instead of compares to other caldera systems on Earth like Campi Flegri in Italy. They don't even have time to proofread these things. I don't. I don't know. I, it's. It looks like. Uh, USG Yellowstone is a volcano observatory is perhaps tired. What are they looking at? Maybe their eyes are too much on monitors that they that they're um, examining, I, or maybe they're just too tired. I have no idea. Now they have a picture here, a beautiful Roman ancient Roman marketplace in Pozzuoli, Italy, the Serapium, 
and records the formation of Campiflegri caldera over 2,000 years, two millennia. It was built above sea level about 2,000 years ago, but mollusks boring on the large marble columns indicate that it subsided by 23 feet below sea level before being uplifted above sea level once more in the past several hundred years. How interesting. It was 23 feet below sea level and it rose again above sea level. Isn't that something? It's like a balloon deflating and inflating again. Amazing. How can we better monitor Yellowstone's dynamic hydrothermal system? This was last week's uh, uh, Caldera Chronicles. Now we go to this week's. We're talking about the Battle of the Giants, how Yellowstone fits into a world of moving mountains. Uh, the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution is from Beth Bartell from the nonprofit UNAFCO Consortium in Boulder, Colorado. We may think of mountains as immobile, but they're not. The reasons they exist is because Earth's surface is in constant motion, colliding tectonic plates, rising Himalayas, Andes, North America's coastal ranges, and magma surfacing at or near these moving plate boundaries, building up the volcanoes. The surfaces of volcanoes are also are moved by the magma and hydrothermal plumbing systems that feed them. Sometimes these motions are small, sometimes they are really, really big. Motion of a volcano resulting from pressure changes within its plumbing system is called deformation, and we can measure it with high precision positioning instruments on the ground, such as GPS, and also from radar satellites. More on that next week. Okay, well, they don't have GPS at Norris Geyser. They only have one seismograph, and they have no temperature monitor. <sighs> now, sometimes, the article goes on to say, sometimes motions are so large, we can see them with our eyes. In the spring of, of 1980, a bulge of the north flank of Mount St. Helens was growing by more than three feet a day as magma pushed up into the mountain while the exact magnitude of the motion was measured with precise ranging instruments, the growing bulge was clearly visible to the naked eye. Well, I should hope so. Three feet is, of course, visible. Now, Mount St. Helens erupted May 18, 1980, beginning with the collapse of that bulge. Rapid ground motion at volcanoes has been observed in many other places as well. At Rabaul Caldera in Papua New Guinea, Motion preceding an eruption in 1994 was so rapid that a reef rose out of the water quickly enough to strand the fish above the water. In 1927, uplift of the coast of Fernandina volcano in the Galapagos occurred so fast that a fishing boat became stranded above water while laying at anchor. Most of the time, however, we need precise instrumentation to measure the deformation of volcanoes, like the GPS, the tilt, the strain meters, stations, and uh, that measure the motions of all the Yellowstone. Well, they don't have GPS, they don't have tilt meters, they don't have strain meters at Mor Norris Geyser, which is rising. They only have one seismograph and no temperature monitors. The magnitudes of these motions vary as much as the volcanoes themselves. Some volcanoes barely move, even when erupting. Other volcanoes move a lot before, during, and after eruptions. Yellowstone tends to move up and down and up and down. Oh, that's so deep. Yellowstone tends to move up and down and up and down, okay, without an eruption. Scientists have recognized that this up and down behavior is normal for many large calderas all around the world. So how much does Yellowstone move? And how does it compare to those other calderas? Let's just look at them in terms of how much the volcano has inflated or moved up. Right, risen, that is. The largest uplift episode measured at Yellowstone during the past few decades averaged about 2 inches per year. And uh, so that 2 inches, that's uh, 20 inches. A few decades, it doesn't say, no, 
And that's my mistake. It says a few decades, but it doesn't say how many. Could it be two? Could it be ten? We don't know. Could it be five? Let's say it's five decades. That's five, that's fifty. And two inches a year, that's a hundred inches. That's over three feet. That's a lot. Don't you think? Three feet? By contrast, the largest uplift episode measured halfway around the world at Campi Flegri in Italy averaged about 25 inches per year over 1982 to 1984. And uh, that's pretty big. Now what's more, the, re the record at Campi Flegri goes back far longer than at Yellowstone, back to Roman times. The caldera, we're talking about 2,000 years back, the caldera is partially submerged beneath the Tyrian Sea, which means the port town of Pozuoli is well within the caldera. Marble columns of a 2,000-year-old marketplace give us a remarkable record of campi, flegri, uplift, and subsidence. The columns are poked with holes from burying sea mollusks, which means the marketplace was built when the land was above sea level, subsided about 23 feet, and was inundated by the seawater, and then it rose up out of the water once again. So what is the source of these changes at Campi Flegri, Yellowstone, and elsewhere? Deformation can be caused by new intrusions of magma, cooling or release of fluids or gases from the magma, changes in the volcano's hydrothermal system, and other factors. Geodesy, the study of these motions, is only one tool in the volcanologist's toolkit, combining geodesy with other measurements like seismicity, and changes in the composition of gases, rocks, and water can go a long way towards understanding how any particular volcanic system behaves and why. Knowing the history of how a volcano has deformed is also important for refining normal, quote-unquote, defining normal for that volcano, since each volcano is different in terms of the activity it experiences. At Yellowstone and other calderas, changes in deformation patterns from uplift to subsidence and back again are a common occurrence. By studying these changes, we hope to learn more about the subsurface conditions that are causing the ground to move and also to monitor for changes that are not normal. Recognizing the normal from the unusual is key for identifying the potential for future hazardous volcanic activity. Well, if you don't monitor the changes, how can you identify the unusual events for potential future eruptions? So if you don't want to have monitors in there, it's because you want to say, I don't want to know if there's going to be a potential future eruption. Hence, no monitors. I'm sorry, you know, I, I don't want you to get upset when you watch my videos. It's just that I, I, I'm upset when people are in positions where they have to do a job and they're not doing the job on purpose. I don't know if that was an order given to them, but they come out with this right in our faces reporting that the biggest geyser in the world, which has rising ground in an area that the rest of the ground is sinking, uh, that's bad news. And they're saying that they don't have a temperature monitor and they only have one seismo seismograph. Uh, that's like in your face type of uh, intentional uh, turning a blind eye intentionally. Uh, they don't want to know what's going on. They don't want to. They don't want to know if there's going to be an erupt. I don't know what to say. They should just remove one of the temperature monitors from another area that, where they have plenty of them and put one or two at least, or three, you know, a couple of them, maybe ten, in the, well, one, even one, in the Norris geyser basin that's rising, where the steamboat geyser goes off, just if it's gone off 13 times already this year. And they still have not mentioned that five earthquake, five magnitude earthquake that they downgraded to 4.4, even if 4.4 is pretty big for Yellowstone, where it was near the new thermal area. And they have no mention of that whatsoever. One of my viewers a couple of days ago told me that they know the geologists on, uh, uh, at Yellowstone that quit 
because he did not agree with the fact that they were, were not uh, reporting on this major earthquake of Yellowstone of a downgraded 5 to a 4.4, even a 4.4 is big. When it happened like over 35 years ago, it was a whole uh, thing. It was a, uh, everybody was flabbergasted at it. And now they're just totally ignoring it. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.